All right, hi, I'm Artem Aginsky. I'm the general manager for Sitar MPU here at Texas Instruments. And we're gonna do a little walkthrough on some of the cool demos we have here at Embedded World today. Um, so we're actually gonna start out over here talking a little bit about electrification and how we're helping make uh, the world a better place uh, through power efficiency and EV charging technology. Uh, so in this particular case, we have our latest AIM-62 product, uh, which combines connectivity human-machine interaction, and power grid management all into a single SOC uh, to help reduce uh, power consumption, drive power efficiency, right, and help the world get more uh, electrified and by result make it a greener place. Uh, but what makes this really unique is all of the integration that this, uh, the TI processors bring together uh, in a single small package uh, at half the power that it traditionally takes. So what's happening there? Ah, uh, yeah, so here we're actually simulating a car. Uh, so what you can see here, you uh, know, typically you would have a charger plugged into the car. In this case, this computer is actually simulating the car. Um, and what's happening is over this wire, there's a communication standard talking between the car and the EV charger to make sure that the charging happens safely and that efficiently, right? And uh, that you get your charge as quickly as possible. Good. Nice. Uh, are you using new chipsets for that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the new AIM-62 uh, Citara MPU that we just launched uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and this is a quad-core A53 SoC that integrates security, processing, uh, and graphical interfacing. Uh, so with integrated GPU and display capabilities to drive a single SoC to solve all the, all the uh, problems around EV charging. Uh, so this is a step up in performance and features? Yeah, absolutely. So what this does is give you scalability uh, to innovate on software uh, in these products, right? So today to do classical EV charging, you really only need about 25% of the device's performance, but it gives you that scalability to add intelligence at the edge. So now instead of having a system that just controls and just communicates, it's one that can actually start to make decisions, right? Imagine a smarter grid where you have multiple cars and knowing which car needs to charge first, right, without any human interaction to drive that. Intelligence directly at the edge. So it's uh, enabling the smart grid. Exactly. Because so far it's not been possible? So today the smart grid, right, the way it's been done is it's uh, retroactive. You collect data, you model it, and you make smart decision based on that data, right? With the edge AI and that intelligence at the edge, what you can actually do is make decisions in real time, right? As the data comes in, you make the decision directly there. Nice. Uh, so do you have some other demos with this chipset? Yeah, we do. They're actually on the other side of the booth we can walk over and take a look at. Yeah. So on the other side, we're actually showing a few uh, AI applications where we're integrating camera-based uh, intelligence. Uh, so what you saw there is intelligence based on data collected from multiple EV chargers. Here we have intelligence on the cameras. Sorry guys, I'm gonna squeeze in here just briefly. Um, so for example, what we're doing here is on this exact same chipset, you can see it here. Um, we're doing intelligence by detecting people. So imagine a doorbell applications. Um, so this is where our partner Plumer I has developed an algorithm running on this SOC uh, that can detect people, right, as you can see on the screen there. Uh, so imagine applications where uh, people counting in a building, where you want to control HVAC, things like that. You want to know when people have walked up to your door. Uh, so all those kind of applications read uh, a very low power SOC that can add that intelligence to the edge. Uh, and especially with the security that comes on these devices, right, it creates a very uh, secure private processing directly at the edge. You don't have to send any of this information out to the cloud. You can just process directly uh, at the edge. Nice. Uh, so is this doing computer vision in a way that's not been done and embedded so far? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So this is actually doing, instead of doing traditional computer vision, this is actually machine learning based, right? So it's actually applying neural uh, models uh, to do uh, AI in real time. Uh, what is uh, TI doing in the AI tiny ML space? 
the yeah, tiny valve. That might not be quite my area of expertise. I okay. think that would be a little closer to the MCU it's portfolio. Fun to say yeah. Um, yeah. Typically, we're on the MPU side, right? We're we're focused in the TF Lite space, uh, so more on the Linux and upper level compute there. Um, but uh, Citara. Do you have any demos MCU. with a bl uh, Bluetooth low energy 5.2? A AOA chips, something like that? Yeah, I do think we do. Let me come over here. So we do have a new BLE chipset uh, that we can look at here in the center. Maybe if we come around here. Um, so we are demonstrating here a new SimpleLink Bluetooth CC2340 uh, device here uh, that's just been re released. Uh, and it's a very low cost product, adding extended battery life. So you can see it with currents less than 830 nanoamps, right? Really driving a very low power uh, Bluetooth wireless MCUs. And it starts at 79 cents. Yeah, exactly. So low cost solutions. And what's on the wall there? Um, let's go over here. These are so a bunch I of solutions already using this chip. Exactly. So, it's so on this the market? is a demonstrator of having many mo uh, nodes together working. Um, I like mesh. Exactly. All right. Maybe uh, one of my colleagues probably knows this demo a little bit better. Okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, maybe your colleague later. Uh, what else are you showing at the booth? Yeah, so I think also just one last point I wanted to show is our ecosystem. Um, we can take a look over here. Uh, this one's the popular part of the area, so maybe uh, we let's can, go around this way. Let's go around that way. All right, let's take a look at it. Um, so as we have these scalable processors that really innovate on how much software you can add to them, um, we actually are partnering with uh, the breadth of our ecosystem into creating off-the-shelf, uh, ready-to-go modules, scaling all the way from entry-level processors like AIM-6 all the way to our high-end TDA-4s with uh, Edge AI analytics integration. Uh, but what we are aiming to do here is make time to market instantaneous through our partnership on systems on modules that provide production-ready hardware for our customers, which we then pair with our software partners where you can get production-grade software as well, built on top of the TI SDK. Uh, so, so why is this side of the booth so popular? It's because cutting edge, uh, time to market solution? Yeah, exactly. The reason it's so popular is you can go to market tomorrow with these solutions, right? And now you can innovate on your software on top of them, right? That level of entry into the market is unprecedented, and that's why it's so popular, the most popular side of our booth. But can, can you explain a little bit what's different compared to the way of doing, doing it before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it reduces time to market because you don't have to design anything around the high speed of the SOCs. You don't have to worry about DDR or camera signals, right? All that is taken care of for you uh, with a hardware module uh, as it is available directly to use in your system. So you can spin a quick board uh, that you're ready to go to market in weeks rather than months. And you have a lot of partners in the ecosystem? Absolutely. And every partner has their own you know, special flavor that they add. It can be anything from uh, the size of the modules, you can see some of them exceptionally small, uh, to the real-time capabilities and industrial um, uh, quality and reliability. So everybody brings a little bit of their own flavor, but the breadth of the ecosystem what, is what helps. What does this Fitech little board do, for example? It's just like a tiny board that can do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So actually, funny enough, all the demos we saw running live, right, those were all on this Fitech sum. Um, and that little board is all it takes to do all of the EV charging, all of the AGI that we showed around the booth. All the different demos. Also the one you did for the EV? Yes, exactly. It runs exactly on that tiny little module right there. So it's got that chip already on it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The AM? A 6.2. 6.2. Yep. And already available, ready to go. So that means you've been working with them in the months or years before Absolutely. launching. Absolutely. Yeah, and we partner with our ecosystem providers well ahead of our launches to make sure that at the time of our product release is not just a piece of silicon, it's a full ecosystem of hardware, software, readily available for you to get started right out of the gate. Uh, G-Opper 
uh, offer hypervision solutions for multi OS? Yeah, like hypervisor and everything. Yeah, we uh, we partner with some commercial providers like QNX for hypervisors. Um, so that's definitely available uh, as an option on our products. What are we looking at here on the table? <laughs> yeah, so leveraging some of our Jacinto products, we actually have autonomous robot platforms uh, for development. So this is a Scuttlebot uh, running on our TDA4 VM product. Um, you can see the board right here. Um, and this is really intended to be an autonomous platform for robotics. Uh, basically, it can navigate, it can map, uh, it does everything you need to do to continue uh, completely autonomously navigate any space. Nice. What did we forget to talk about? I don't think we forgot anything, quite honestly. I think we did a good job covering everything we have here. Uh, but a very exciting time with some of the latest product launches with AIM 6.2 uh, and the BLE chips. And uh, some uh, amazing things happening in the future, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, there will be no shortage of other exciting parts here coming here soon.